Republican Dan Sullivan of Alaska in focus. He just returned from a bipartisan visit to Israel. Welcome home. Uh, first of all, I, I was just saying to the audience that sometimes the, the audience for, if you will, a speech like that and previously from a Palestinian leader and an Israeli foreign minister can speak to whom out there? I'm going to ask you, and what kind of change or shift could it potentially bring? Well, thanks, Harris. And, um, you know, I think what's happening at the UN right now is important. Just getting back from Israel and actually Saudi Arabia and Egypt with a CODEL, I can tell you um, in Israel, I was in a country that's shocked, that's outraged, that is in deep, deep grief. Mm -hmm. But there's also a huge sense of vulnerability that probably hasn't happened in Israel since any time since the Holocaust, when you think about it, which was pre-Israel. Um, so, Harris, it certainly underscored my commitment and every senator on that CODEL that I was just with, our commitment to stand with Israel, to enable them to defend their country, to literally defend their existence. And I think one thing that um, Secretary Blinken said just now, which I would agree with is where is the moral outrage? I right. met with families who were uh, families of hostages. We got very detailed briefings, including videos, unbelievable videos taken by these terrorists, these Hamas terrorists, showing them killing, chopping up people. Harris, it was just hard to even look at what we were seeing. I encourage the Israelis to get that out to the world. Where's the moral outrage? What I'm concerned about on a whole host of fronts is number one, just watch our media, watch the media around the world. They're already saying moral equivalence. There's no moral equivalence here. You had a rampage of thousands of terrorists who were purposely trying to kill civilians. There needs to be outrage on that. But the message he was sending, mm -hmm. you know, I think it was a missed opportunity just now from Secretary Blinken. I'm oh. glad he mentioned Iran. Um, because the Biden administration has been reluctant to mention Iran. But right there in front of the U.N., two days ago, the U.N. lifted its sanctions on ballistic missiles on Iran. Why didn't the secretary just now say, let's put that regime back in place? That's a great point. That's a and great why... point. So there you go. The U.N. just lifted sanctions. The Houthis, yes. who are attacking Israel, a proxy of Iran, is shooting missiles that they're getting from Iran. The Hamas gets its missiles from Iran. Hezbollah gets its missiles from Iran. And right then, the UN, uh, two days ago, lifted sanctions on ballistic missiles That's from right. Iran. This underscores a bigger problem. The discussions on Iran, they're starting to name Iran. That's positive. But with this administration, it has to be actions. It has to be actions to be tough on Iran because the Biden administration, like the Obama administration, had an undeniable strategy of appeasement mm -hmm. with regard to Iran. If you want me to go uh, through the list, I will, Harris. Hopefully, they're going to finally recognize you know, this fever dream of the Democrats to appease Iran has to stop. I have to say this because I have been asking, Senator, about why we didn't take the role of snapback a week ago when we could have stopped the sanctions by the United Nations from expiring, which you say ballistic missiles, I mean, they've got some higher tech things like drones that we use that they can sell on a more open market now, Iran can. And who would they sell them to? You just told us. You yeah. named some of the proxies. I, I want you to go through the list of things because I think people don't understand that there are some things the United States could be doing. And it's like we've lost our spine. I don't know. Maybe somebody sold it on eBay. I still have mine. You still have yours. We need the administration to show some backbone now. 100%. Look, the other uh, uh, takeaway from our code, L was that the malign influence of Iran is everywhere. Every leader that we met with started with this. There is no doubt mm. that Iran ultimately was behind this. Remember, there's no Hamas without Iran. There's no Hezbollah without Iran. They fund them, they train them, they supply them. That is a fact. And so what happened at the beginning of the Biden administration, after the Trump administration, to its credit, um, re-established deterrence by killing Iranians' top terrorists, mm -hmm. uh, the Quds Force Commander Soleimani, 
and, but also the Trump administration launched a peace initiative, the Abraham Accords, right. which was having a tremendous positive impact on the region. Guess who hated the peace breaking out in the Middle East? Iran. So a big mm -hmm. part of what happened here with regard to Hamas's brutality against Israel was also Iran's attempt to stop the um, uh, peace in the regions. They hated that. And the Biden administration came in, undid all of the tough sanctions uh, on Iran and um, have essentially allowed oil to be exported. You saw this six billion dollar uh, hostage deal. It has to stop. Senator Dan Sullivan of the great state of Alaska, I am so grateful that you went with that bipartisan uh, CODEL and that you come home and you can, you can, in plain speaking, telling us what we are up against. Uh, appreciate your time, your expertise, and your recent visit, you sharing it with us. Thank you. Thank you, Harris.